Hi everyone, uh, two years ago I made a quick video on an Arduino based VU level meter. Uh, lots of people seem to want to make it but struggled a little bit to get things working. Uh, this was the very first uh, YouTube video I ever made. I had no idea what I was doing and it was pretty terrible. Uh, there is a link above uh, if you want to look at it. Uh, so I thought I'd remake the video with step by step instructions. So this VU meter that I've made uh, has two channels in either stereo or mono mode and the modes are changed with uh, the push of a button so we can change through the different patterns here. Uh, long pressing the button will automatically change the pattern um, every 10 seconds uh, and it also remembers the last pattern uh, that you had it on. So if you power off the VU meter it will continue with the same pattern once you turn it back on again. There are 17 patterns in total, 10 of which are sound responsive uh, and 7 are background patterns which run without reference to the sound that's being input. Uh, I'll demonstrate all of these at the end of the video. So the code for this is available via GitHub, uh, but if you're new for Arduino, uh, it might be a good idea to watch the rest of this video uh, before trying to make it yourself. Uh, so let's begin by having a look at the schematic. So this might look a bit complicated, uh, but it's actually quite straightforward to build uh, on a breadboard if you have the parts. Uh, here I'm using a, a knockoff Arduino Nano that I got from eBay for about three pounds, uh, but it'll work equally well with an Uno or with any other five volt board. Uh, the audio comes in through this audio jack just here. Uh, and at this point, the signal is oscillating around the zero volt mark. So you can see that our sound source is going to be going above zero volts and then below zero volts and above and below again. Um, but the problem is that the ADC and the Arduino can only go from zero to five volts. Uh, so if you plug this straight into an analog pin, we'd actually lose half the signal. We'd lose all of this signal down here. So what we do is we plug it into a voltage divider. And this voltage divider drags up the input signal. So instead of oscillating around uh, zero volts, it's actually oscillate, oscillating around two and a half volts instead. And this is something that the ADC can deal with. Uh, capacitors C1 and C2 here um, are used to block the DC from these voltage dividers uh, from getting back into the audio device. The values of these aren't particularly critical, around 10 microfarads is fine. Uh, the values of R1 to R4 are not particularly critical either. Uh, a few tens of kilo ohms are absolutely fine. On the output side of things, let's start with the switch. Um, this should be a momentary push to make type switch. Tactile switches, also known as tack switches, uh, are fine for this. In the code, I've set it up to use a pull-up resistor, uh, which means that normally pin D3 is connected to 5 volts. But when this button is pressed, D3 is pulled down to the ground, uh, and that registers an input. Uh, the data in for the LED strips uh, are attached to D5 and D6. Um, I'm using WS2812B LED strips here, but any 5 volt strips of a similar type should work. Uh, the data pins are connected via these 330 ohm resistors and uh, that reduces the current flowing out of the, the, the digital pins but it also cuts down on noise a little bit. Uh, speaking of noise, this is quite an electrically noisy circuit. <laughs> so to drop this a little bit, it's a good idea to add some capacitance uh, across the, um, the power wires um, just before each LED strip. I've used a thousand microfarads here, but obviously the problem is that the larger you make the capacitance, um, the bigger the capacitor gets physically, and that might end up being a problem. But the, the higher the capacitance you can put here, the, the more you'll cut down on that electrical noise. Uh, when you're wiring up the strips, make sure that they're facing the correct way with the arrows on the data line uh, pointing away from the Arduino. This circuit would also work with a, a microphone. Uh, I'd recommend getting one like this with a built-in preamplifier. Um, that way nothing else about the circuit has to change. Uh, if you search eBay for this, for Max4466, um, you'll find quite a few options. Basically you connect uh, VCC to 5 volts and you connect ground to ground, and then the output is just connected onto the left channel uh, of the audio jack. Um, you might have to play with some of the parameters in the code, uh, such as the noise or gain setting, um, but we'll have a little look at some of those settings a bit later on. Now we've seen how it works, um, what we'll do is we'll grab the code from GitHub. Uh, it's important to follow these steps quite carefully to make sure it behaves. So the first thing we need to do from a software point of view is to head over to GitHub, which is linked in the description below, uh, and download the whole of this repository as a zip file. So we go to clone or download, and we click on download zip. Give that a few seconds, um, and then I'm just going to drag the, uh, the zip file here onto the desktop. I'm going to open the zip file up and uh, drag the folder that's inside it out. So we've unzipped it. And this is really important. If you don't do this exactly like this, uh, then it won't work. The next thing you have to do is you have to rename this. So it's currently called uno underscore vu underscore line dash master. What we're going to do is we're going to delete the hyphen master part. So it's just uno underscore vu underscore line. So we open the folder up and uh, open up uno vu line to ino. 
Uh, and now in order to get this code to compile, we're going to need the JC button library. Uh, and that's quite straightforward to add. All we have to do is go to tools and then go to manage libraries. And then in the search box that pops up up here, uh, we need to search for JC underscore button. Now I've already got it installed on mine, so I can't do that. If you haven't installed this library before, just press the install button and it uh, should work fine. At this point, it's a good idea to check to make sure it compiles properly. So we can click the little verify check mark up there. So let's do that and uh, let's give it a few seconds to make sure it all compiles as it should. Open this up in case we get any um, extra messages. That's a fairly normal warning you get with uh, FastLED. There we go, and that's compiled uh, no problem at all. Now, if it compiles as it should, um, you can now change some of these parameters at the top uh, in the defines. Um, you'll almost certainly want to change uh, this one just here, which is n pixels. So this is the number of pixels you have in each string. Um, the code at the moment only supports strips uh, of the same length. So this is, at uh, the moment, it's a strip of length 17, so 17 pixels. Max milliamps here is set to 500. Uh, this is set fairly low on purpose, and that avoids drawing too much current from your USB port. Um, if you're using a power bank or a mains charger or something like that to power this uh, project, you can increase this to make the LEDs brighter, uh, but just be a little bit careful if you're running off a computer USB port and you have lots of LEDs connected. If you turn this up to maybe 2000 milliamps, um, your laptop or your computer USB port will probably shut down uh, and disconnect the um, device to protect itself. You might also want to change the noise setting just here. Um, basically, if you find some of the lights are still on when there's no sound playing, uh, then you want to increase this number. Uh, the higher it is, though, the less reactive those lights will be. Uh, finally, we also have uh, stereo down here. Uh, if you set stereo to be true, then the left and right channel levels uh, will be displayed on the left and right LED strips. Uh, but if you set it to false, uh, both strips will show whatever's on the left channel. Uh, and so you might want to do this when using a, a microphone, for example. At this point, we can upload the code and have a play about with some of the patterns. And what I'll do, I'll leave you with a demonstration of some of the patterns available.
Okay, everyone, that's all for now. Uh, please do leave questions uh, in the comments section below, and I hope you found that useful. All right, thanks very much.